Good afternoon and welcome to Hashtag Flint with Shane Hodges and this is Megan and today we're coming together to talk about uh, just a weekly update of everything that's been happening in the city and all the important issues that people who live in Flint are dealing with and uh, we got some things to talk about and some issues to make sure everyone understands we're all on the same page and fighting together. And uh, we just want to do a recap because lately there's been a lot of information being pumped through the news and through the internet and we just like to comment on a few things. So today we're going to talk a few, a little bit about this task force uh, ruling and we're going to talk about our governor's comments about our current water situation. And then we're going to talk about some personal issues. So Megan, uh, you ready to get started and talk a little bit about what's going on here in Flint? Yes, thanks Shane for having me. No um, I do just want to thank everyone that's worked so hard on behalf of the city of Flint. We have to keep going and we will see positive results. I think so too and that's the key word, we. We. There's no, there can be a chairman of this board because we're too many unique and different individuals that you know, we have our own ways and our own things. The key, I think, personally, is we all have to stay in our own lanes and keep on moving. One of the things that we talked about discussing first was the uh, the statements made by the task force. So the Michigan, the governor, the attorney general's office, because of uh, our Senator Ananak, they put together a report on the findings of what happened in this situation. And some of the things they said about what the MDEQ did to the people, especially, and the professionals as well, is it's kind of disturbing that, you know, some of the words they used were, you know... Harsh. Harsh words. And they, I just, uh, I think it's, we were protesting. We were there. We talked to them face to face. We told everybody what was going on from the beginning, from the first blizzard, uh protest till now you know and some of the things that we were you know we were act they were acting like we were wrong and they tried to discredit us at every turn and you know while people are getting sick people are their hair is falling out you know the children for example on the Matt O show last night Mr. Kildee was talking about the children not only the children are affected but the elderly as well as the people who are not going to see the effects until 20 years from now everybody's affected everybody needs help from education on lead poisoning to diet and exercise tips to try to you know reverse some of the damage or maybe just get a better, healthier lifestyle moving forward to produce some results of change. You know, that's these are some of the things as well as water. Because one issue I have currently is if you call 211 or the emergency uh, station, whatever they call it, at the fire department, you get nowhere. You get absolutely nowhere. I called and I was told the pickup day for your area is Friday. It was a Monday. We're facing a snowstorm. So, you know, these are some of the issues that we're dealing with, and, um, and it's very nice to finally have an apology from the governor. But I, I don't think it's enough. I think this guy's trying to save his political career, and it's, you showed that your, your uh, fight against democracy, the emergency manager system, where people come into cities and ignore the people and just do what they want for... You know, I heard a quote, someone said that it's a bean counter's philosophy. It's all about the money. If the money is adding up, that's fine. Who cares about the uh, casualties? And that's, that's what we've been dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, and all the fighting amongst ourselves and things. These, these, there's people involved in this situation that are here to just keep on continuing to create chaos. You know, the... We we have to be stopped is the powers that be, you know, stance towards this. And that's why it's important for everyone to continue to share all the knowledge they have. Nobody's better than the other person. Some people may do more interviews, but they have all the issues correctly. Because I can't speak about, I know about TTHMs and I know about lead leaching from pipes. But there are people who know exactly what's going on. And they do do a lot of interviews. And I want to thank you, Melissa Mays, 
you you are uh, doing a phenomenal job and I would I'm glad to be represented by you there's other people that are doing things behind the scenes and gathering information and who have dealt with situations Art Woodson and all the information he has with the Camp Lejeune thing you know we're going to do a lot more uh, investigation. We're going to show you what some people look like after lead poisoning 20 years down the, the road. We have a lot of things coming to try to maintain the knowledge and the education on what's really happening. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things you would like to talk about, you know, personal things and things that have happened with your family. So, you know, just tell us a little bit about what's going on with you and the things that you had to put up with. Okay, well, both children are having issues and I want to make this clear too some of these effects are showing up a lot quicker than yes. 10 or 20 years down the line so that needs to be known too that even five years down the line some of this is already showing in yeah. our society so that's one thing that needs to be addressed the mental health of the children huge portion my daughter was uh, covered in scars lost her hair didn't want to go outside so much so that she started like self mutilating and she just couldn't handle it she almost tried to commit suicide took wow. her to the hospital and unfortunately there isn't any facilities here in Flint for minors that may be struggling with mental health so that was an issue and um, so we got through that the best we can. It's just hard to see them go through it. And as a mother, you're looking at, okay, she's got these sores, she's got, she's breaking out, what do I do? Okay, obviously you keep them clean. Get back in the shower, get back in the shower. We're taking like two, three showers a day. She's getting out burning, her eyes are burning, her skin is burning, what is going on? Right. And so, you know, all I kept thinking was get in there, keep it clean, get in there. And, the whole time it was just making it worse and then okay we go back to the doctor lotions creams potions everything to try to make it better and it just it just continued and so it just went from one to the other and finally we said well, what has changed and I said well our water has changed and I was met with a lot of adversity at first and then um, so I, I hear a lot of people have. Um, yes, yes. You know, I did a lot of monitoring of social media and all the different groups, the Flint Class Action, the Flint River Support Group, the What Are You Fighting For? I watched all of those groups, and I heard from all of the people what was really going on. And that's when I began fighting behind the scenes. I always made sure that I'm doing this online. I wasn't one of the ones to step forward during that protest February the 14th and 20 degrees below weather, but I was behind the scenes. I was still fighting continually, trying to bring awareness to the situation. And just like the task force decided with Governor Snyder that we weren't listened to. We were totally downgraded, downplayed, and that's something that I think is being in addressed now with all yes, of the new is. position changes. Yes, that was, and you know, we're speaking about the DEQ director resigning, the spokesman resigning, and before that, the governor's spokesperson resigning. And we can't forget, bye-bye, Dane Walling, bye-bye. Because he was one of the main people that were on TV in late August drinking and saying, the water's fine. We passed all MDEQ's tests, which later we found out that was wrong. They were wrong and they misled everybody on it. So we're starting to see where it came from. They knew what was going on, but they refused. And one of the points that I'd like to make to everyone is, if we didn't have Leanne Walters and Melissa Mays and Mark Edwards testing and fighting regardless of being shut down by the city, they would still be telling us the water's fine. They would still be overcharging us. Don't forget court, January 4th, Judge Heyman's courtroom about the illegal water rates. But this is what would have happened to us and we would have continued to be poisoned. And I know, you know, your situation, that's a parent's nightmare. You can't help your baby and you see them hurt and hurt and on top of all this you're paying for the things overpriced that are hurting them they're still being you know we're still being overcharged we're being charged for water that's prepaid till june 
So, you know, these are some of the fights that we still have and we have to continue to like and share and put as much information out. True water warriors, not people who just talk about the problems, but the people who know about TTHMs, the people who know about the illegal rate raises, the people who know about the lead. We have plenty of experts, Dr. Mona, Laura Sullivan, who have spoken out. The, uh, even the mayor's blueberry committee has said that there's problems. So, you know, and I think today there's a big meeting at city council. They're discussing the, uh, the water rate raise and the lawsuit behind it, the $15.7 million. I think it's up to every resident of Flint before they throw away our opportunity to get some payback we need to be involved in the decision making today it's executive uh, meeting they have closed doors but we have people looking at the open meetings act to see if we can get somebody in there because it's unfair for them to make these decisions because as you know that leads me into mr freeman who a couple months ago was the city council president sitting on the KWA board, Mr. Flint, and all of a sudden yesterday, Flint's not good enough for him and his family, so they're out of here. They're going to better opportunities. How can a city leader walk away from a city for that reason? I mean, come on, guys. You know, this is the problem we've had. It's the same group of people that we see the Daryl Buchanans and the Dumases. They keep popping up. And they keep taking all of the money and just squeezing this city. And it's time for a change. We need to take a look at that council. We need to take a look at this governor. It's time. And, you know, the more we can raise awareness, the more we can just keep going and keep going and getting things squared away. And it's up to us because, as you can see, the leaders, the, the Department of Environmental Quality, are, they're, they're not going to to tell us the truth we have to find for ourselves we have to fight for ourselves i you know a lot of people look at us like we just want free water and we want free this and we're so helpless we're not we're fighting for the things that we have gotten so far we're fighting to get what little bit of move we've had and, and governor thank you for the apology but we need more than that we need you to sign that emergency declaration and send it straight to Washington. That's what we need. We don't need any apologies or any pretty little statements in papers and in public. We need you to act on what Mayor Weaver is asking for. You know, Megan, it's it's just, you know, as, as a regular citizen and you find yourself investigating and looking you know when the election time comes they are every city council member who's running they all love you and will work for you and do take care of your personal issues but when it comes down to making the right decision we haven't seen any type of leadership until now with mayor karen weaver and i hope it continues from this to snowball into a city that is aware and transparent of the people that they're supposed to represent and serve it's not about you and your opportunities it's about what can you do for us so these are some of the things that that's what's going on here and we need help and we need to recognize too flint has some excellent people yes they do and we have some excellent people that may have lived in flint have families in flint but now they're in other states and guess what they're still fighting for flint so this is we need to make sure that there's safe water all across the nation not just Flint. So we need new legislation to make sure that the whole safety of the United States is protected. Exactly, because we can be the beacon, the spark that starts awareness on drinking water. Because our drinking water, you want to talk about terrorist att attacks, that's where our, we're most vulnerable, drinking water. So if we have our systems protected and we're aware of our of what's going into our bodies, it gives us a better chance to fight and it gives us more knowledge on what's going on. There are a lot of groups out there that have so much important information. We need to continue to share and any if anybody has any uh, meetings, charter review meetings, any meetings that the community should be at, that's what we need to share. We need to share positive, uplifting information. That's the goal of All Points TV is to get out and 
you know, let the news be heard. The truth, not what Channel 12 thinks you should hear, but what's really going on. And it's time for Flint to shine, period. We've had a lot of negative press. Everybody thinks we're pretty much a lost cause. But guess what? We've got people here, and these people are on top of things like you wouldn't believe. And so, it's all coming in 2016. This is come. our year. Here we come. And with that, it's uh, good to see you. Have a great day. And we're out of here.